In everyone's life, there are ups and downs, and more often than not, financial concerns or money-related stress affects everyone at one point or another. Loss of a job, pay cuts, or unexpected expenses can all play a part in mounting financial difficulty and stress. Prolonged financial issues can be more serious and plague families and individuals for years, if not their entire lives. In some cases, prolonged financial difficulty may lead to bankruptcy and proposals. But what exact factors lead to this situation? It is important to understand the related causative issues that are cumulative over time and ultimately lead people to declare bankruptcy and file proposals. In the following presentation, we will look at these issues, habits, and attitudes. Identify them within our own financial practices, as well as suggest strategies and practices that will develop positive and healthy financial strategies to turn things around and get things back on the right track. These are the warning signs of financial difficulty and their contributing factors. Money wasters, personal spending and shopping habits. How to turn your situation around with proper budgeting and money management, tactics and strategies. Spending, saving and positive shopping habits. Money savers, shopping tips. The warning signs of financial difficulty are wide ranging and sometimes very subtle. In some instances, there may only be a single symptom to indicate financial trouble. In other cases, there may be multiple issues readily apparent upon a simple lifestyle and financial evaluation. Most people with financial difficulties and money stress simply are suffering needlessly. This is because they have not benefited from some basic financial training. Training that helps develop their own fiscal awareness and responsibilities. With some simple, easy to implement practices, some organization, and a little discipline, most financial situations can be rectified without succumbing to more serious solutions, such as bankruptcy proceedings or proposals. The following are some of the practices that are clear warning signs and are contributing factors of financial difficulty. Using credit because you don't have the money to pay for everyday expenses. Frequently using overdraft. Making minimum payments on credit cards. Difficulty paying monthly bills regularly and on time. Uncertain about how much you owe in total. Debts creating anxiety or stress. Charging more each month than you pay on credit. Collectors constantly calling and harassing you. You're over your borrowing limit on your credit card, overdraft, or line of credit. You're considering consolidating your debts. You're using payday loan advances on your paychecks. There are also non-budgetary factors such as gambling, addiction, marital, family and health problems that can greatly impact the financial picture. These are serious issues that need to be addressed in order to turn things around. But for almost everyone, money wasting is a huge concern for those in financial risk. Society today is constantly bombarding us with advertising, enticing us to buy things that are ultimately unnecessary and frivolous. Unconsidered or unconscious purchasing practices can lead to chronic money wasting and ultimately financial distress. This unnecessary or avoidable spending every month can add up fast. Many people often think, what's $10 here and $5 there? However, taking a closer look at the accumulation of this type of spending can often lead to hundreds and even thousands of dollars thrown away every year. Here are some possible money wasters. Buying items to impress others. TV, catalog, or online shopping. Gambling. Lending money to friends. Purchasing designer label clothing. Dining in fancy restaurants. Dining out several times a week. $5 lattes every day. Buying lunch multiple times a week. More than one vehicle per family. Lotteries and bingo lavish and expensive gifts, buying toys that you cannot afford, for example, boats, quads, recreation vehicles. Take a closer look at the money wasters in your life and see where you can minimize or eliminate any of these costs. The potential savings could be huge. Success in addressing money wasting expenses is as much about cutting extravagant items as it is about attention to the details. Stop the trickle of micro spending with cost-saving diligence and an understanding that every dollar counts. As an example, one of my clients saved a significant amount of money when he stopped driving downtown and paying expensive parking rates every day. 
he started taking the train. Over one year, he saved enough money to pay off a significant creditor, simply by making a simple change. Now that you have seen ways in which you may be putting yourself into financial deep water, spending beyond your means, or throwing money away, how do you turn things around? To start to regain financial well-being, it is critical that a realistic budget or spending plan be developed. One, the first step is to determine your total current family income. This should be your earnings after deductions or your take-home pay. This includes other regular income as well, such as family allowance. The total of all income should be entered under income on the budget planner. Two, your regular income, such as income tax refunds, overtime pay and bonuses can be entered in the irregular and annual expense category on the budget planner or may be allocated to your emergency funds or savings. If you are paid every two weeks, there will be two months a year when you receive a third paycheck. This amount can be allocated the same way. Estimate your total monthly family expenses. After you track your spending, you'll be able to adjust these figures to more accurately reflect your spending. These expenses are your absolute essentials, money you need to spend each month to live and may include the following. Food. This includes all food, toiletries, cleaning supplies, and paper products you may buy at the grocery store. This does not include meals eaten out at restaurants as this should be included under personal allowances. Housing. Rent, mortgage payments, condominium or maintenance fees. If your property taxes are not included in your mortgage payments, they can be listed under annual expenses. Utilities. Services that you use in your home. Household incidentals. Miscellaneous expenses such as stamps, dry cleaning, laundry, newspapers, and bank service charges. Transportation. Bus and taxi rides, gas, and car payments. Vehicle maintenance is an irregular expense. Personal allowances. Money that each family member needs for things like haircuts, coffee, meals away from the house, babysitting, lottery tickets, alcohol, and tobacco products. Recreation, physical fitness and entertainment. Expenses such as memberships and season's tickets should be included as an irregular expense or annual expense. Other monthly expenses, lessons, childcare, and support payments. These expenses should then be added to the monthly living expenses column on the budget planner. Irregular expenses occur several times each year and may include school expenses, car maintenance, clothing, and health care. Annual expenses occur once per year, such as membership dues, insurance, property taxes, or Christmas expenses. Add these expenses up on the budget planner. Then divide the total by 12 to get your monthly requirement for these expenses, and enter this number in the budget planner as well. This monthly figure should be the amount of money you put into your savings account each month. This also ensures you will have enough money to pay these annual and irregular expenses when they become due. Another tip is to stagger your expenditures so that you do not have too many bills to pay in the same month. Do your income and expenses balance. If your income and expenses equal each other, then you will have no money to put towards your goals savings, credit payments, etc. Is your income greater than your expenses? This is the desired outcome, and you will have money to put toward your goals. Are your expenses greater than your income? If this is the case, you will not have any money to put toward your goals. You will have to cut back on your spending, to balance your budget, and work towards paying off your debts. Go back to your expenses and look for areas where you can cut back. What expenses are essential to live and what aren't? essential but provide you a level of extra comfort. Tips on how to cut back, spending, saving and shopping habits will be covered in a later section. The next step is to set realistic goals. These goals should be prioritized such as first paying off your debt or building an emergency fund. Other goals may include saving for retirement, a new vehicle, a down payment on a house or a vacation. Your goals should be smart specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. The SMART goals should appear similar to this sample. 
Enter the monthly amount you're putting away in your budget planner under the Amount for Savings and Credit Payments section. You may find that you'll need to adjust your spending and our monthly expenses to achieve these goals. Go back to your expenses. Is there anything you can cut out? If yes, make the necessary adjustments on your budget planner. Spending, saving and shopping habits will be covered in a later section. Once you've estimated your expenses and set a preliminary budget, it's extremely important that you track your spending. You may find that your monthly expenses are either over or under your original estimate. By tracking your monthly expenses over two to three months, you'll have a more realistic figure for your budget. There are various methods you can use to track your expenses. Two examples are as follows. Write the name of each expense on an envelope. Example, gas, entertainment, food, etc. Keep all of your receipts. Either at the end of the month or throughout, sort your receipts into their corresponding envelopes. This process will allow you to easily total your expenses at the end of the month. Write the name of each expense on an envelope, example gas, entertainment, food, etc. At the beginning of the month, withdraw the cash out of the bank machine that you will need for your expenses. For example, if you budgeted $100 for entertainment, then put $100 cash into that corresponding envelope. When you take money from an envelope, replace it with a receipt. These two types of money tracking are very simple and very effective at getting a handle on one's expenditures. By using the cash envelope method, it will prevent you from going over budgeted amounts each month because when the cash is gone, it is gone. If you run out of money from one section or envelope, you can take money from another. Keep in mind, this will affect the accurateness of your budget and may have long-term consequences if you do this too often. If there are purchases where you do not receive a receipt or forget to obtain one, write down the amount on a piece of paper before you forget and put it into the envelope with the rest of your receipts. Carry a small notebook around with you to write down your purchases. You can then total all purchases at the end of the month. Try subtracting as you spend so that you can track how much money you still have available. After tracking your spending for a good amount of time, if you feel that you have a pretty accurate idea of your monthly expenses, make any necessary adjustments to your budget planner. Record keeping is always a smart idea. Try keeping the entire budget related information in one place, such as in a binder. You should also keep all versions of your budget so you can track increases or decreases in spending and income or changes to your goals. This is also a great place to track your irregular expenses. Each of these expenses should be detailed on their own page or separately. Once you've been able to track your expenses for a while and have a more accurate idea of your monthly expenditures, you should review your spending patterns. Where are you wasting money? Where can money be saved? Money savers are solutions that save us money in the long run. Pay off credit cards, pay cash, don't balance checks, balance your checking account regularly. Make a grocery list and stick to it. Don't go to the grocery store hungry, use coupons, carpool, use public transit, trade children's clothing with a friend or use hand-me-downs, make lunches rather than eating out, bring your own coffee inside a thermos instead of buying it somewhere else. Buying a $1.50 cup of coffee every morning can add up fast to $547 a year. Shop around to get the lowest price. Here are some shopping tips. If you see something you want, go home and think about it for a couple of days. Chances are, you'll find that you really didn't need it. If you do decide to buy the item, make sure it fits into your budget. Use a list. Only take enough cash to cover the cost of the purchase on your list. Stay within the budgeted amount of money. Take your time making large purchases. Shop around. You may find that you would like to put more money towards your goals or that you would like to spend your money in different ways. We will go over ways in which you can get more money to put toward your goals. Try to find a part-time job. Work more hours at your current job or a non-working family member can try to find work. Look at each expense item on your budget planner. Do you want to spend more or less than you are currently spending on each item? Would you rather spend the money on something else? These questions are not as odd as they may seem. 
People often spend lots of money on things they do not value without considering the real worth of these things. This may mean that they cannot buy the things they really want. Go back to the money savers. What changes can you implement in your life? Pack a lunch? Take transit or walk instead of driving to work? Buy fewer prepared foods? Make more meals from scratch and don't use credit cards? Or if you do use them, pay the total balance owing on time every month. Sell something that you own. You may want to sell items at a garage sale that you don't use very often, or you can live without. You can even sell a more expensive item such as a vehicle or piece of jewelry. And remember, record all these decisions on your budget planner. Also remember that budgeting is an ongoing, lifelong activity. When your income and or expenses change, you'll want to review and adjust your budget. Don't become discouraged if your plan doesn't work perfectly. You are bound to overestimate some expenses, and there are always those unplanned expenses. If your budget is not working, revise it and keep trying. It's important that you should build some rewards into your budget. It's okay to allow yourself a little fun money for things like a special purchase or a family outing. Knowing that you have this money set aside will help you stick to your budget. Keep your thoughts on a brighter future. Try to follow your budget as closely as you can so that you are able to accomplish your goals. Budgeting is part of life, and it can be rewarding. It can enable you with a sense of confidence and peace knowing that things are going in the right direction.